My name is Douglas Gouveia. I'm professor at the University of São Paulo in Brazil. And uh, we have been working for over 20 years in understanding, quantifying the phenomena of segregation in ceramic oxide interface. And today, we will try to show you how this segregation is very important for the, a better uh, artificial photosynthesis. The term artificial photosynthesis is commonly used to refer to any scheme for capturing and storing the energy from sunlight and the chemical bonds of fuel. Heterogeneous photocatalysis depends on the surface and bulk. And uh, two characters of bulk are most important, band gap and uh, the electron hole recombination time. And the band gap depends on the light, energy of light, and uh, determines the chemical energy for uh, all uh, chemical reactions, then the, the valence band and the conductive band and all defects and uh, then the soluble uh, impurities uh, you change the the level of defectors inside the band gap the recombination time is a function of uh, the free pathway and then it's very interesting because we have a direct relationship with this uh, recombination time with the conductivity of grain boundaries in the, in the nano oxide Simultaneously to the bulk properties, the surface properties are very important for the heterogeneous catalysis. And the surface deter determines the number of uh, adsorption sites. The, uh, and and uh, this number of adsorption sites depends on the, surf the crystal gas surface and the kind of uh, uh, surface you have and the kinetic and thermodynamic of adsorption because all a reaction depends on adsorption of, uh, of species, species in the surface. To increase the photocatalysis, we need then a lot of surfaces. And then we work with nanoxides. These nanoxides have nanostructure. It is nanostructure, it's, it, this nanostructure has two main parts, the grain boundaries and surfaces. Grain boundaries are all interface between solids and surface are the interface between a solid and a gas or a solid and a liquid. The interface segregation is a spontaneous thermodynamic process for both grain boundaries and surfaces. And it's a very important phenomenon to change all surface or interface properties and the stability of particles, the reactivity of surfaces and interfaces, the cond electrical conductivity. But what is interface segregation in a solid? Segregation, adsorption and surface energy are strictly related to the surface X. The surface axis is done by the number of moles by meter square or by surface. And then when you have a, a surface excess and a rate of segregation or adsorption, the system reacts with a decrease of surface energy and then stabilization. Then the surface energy of pure material is decreased by this amount of atoms and surface by segregation or adsorption and the rate of adsorption or segregation. Then the gas, we have then the pressure of gas and the next to the surface we have uh, a short layer and uh, this adsorption layer determines the surface excess and then you have a, a decrease of surface energy. It's the same case for segregation. When we have a solid solution, in the bulk we have the solubility, but next to the surface we have an increase of concentration. Is this increase of concentration is the surface excess. Some years ago we proposed a method to 
No house the surface access by a lixiviation, selective lixiviation method. Then for nanoparticles, uh, the nanoparticles with grain powder in its surfaces, we have an additive segregate on the surface and a grain boundary and some additive soluble in the, in the bulk. Okay? Then we have an insoluble oxide matrix and the additive is soluble in acid solution. Then by lixiviation in nitric acid, for example, it's pos possible to separate the, the atoms on the surface, segregate on the surface from the atoms in the grain boundary and soluble in the bulk. Okay? Then this part, this part is insoluble, this part is acid soluble. Then by centrifugation, we have a separation of phase. Here, it's possible to know how is the concentration of atoms in the, solu in the solution by ECP, for example. And here, it's possible to know how is the, the concentration of additive in the nanoparticles in the soluble part. By this method, it's very easy to know how is the concentration of, the, of additive in the surface, then the surface acts. Looking the thermodynamic behind the surface axis we have when you have a uh, free energy of segregation the concentration in the bulk and the surface are not the same and the free energy of segregation is approximately the same of the rate of segregation the rate of segregation has four components the first one is the difference of uh, uh, surface energy between the solid and the solvent. The second one is related to the, to the solubility. The third is the difference between the uh, atomic size or ionic size. Then when you have a high, uh, a big difference between our radios, it's more easy to segregate. And the last one is the electric charge related to the charge of ions in the, the system, then related to the depletion layer. One of the main consequences of surface excess is the, the stabilization of particle size. Then when you take this law of particle growth, then the particle growth for time t, the growth depends on the surface energy and diffusion and uh, we have some kind of curve like that then the in here is two or three and uh, when you change the surface energy or the diffusion when you decrease the surface energy or the diffusion we have a decrease in the final particle size here and we see this because uh, because when you have a surface access we have a decrease of surface energy and then the stabilization of particle size. And then as a consequence, a direct consequence uh, is the increase of a specific surface area for a uh, long time of calcination. Now I want to show you some results about our work in the photocatalysis and try to and try to connect the surface segregation with uh, the photosynthesis and uh, uh, how this photosynthesis is, could be better with uh, ion segregation. Then we have two works. One is the segregation of chlorines and zinc oxide in the grain boundaries, then the change in the conductivity and the increase of recombination time, the consequence in the photocatalysis and the second uh, results group of results is the uh, transition transition metals uh, doped titanium oxide then the segregation and photocatalysis in this slide you can see the chloride segregation results on zinc nanoxide surface uh, these results were recently published in the Ceramic International and I invite you to read this paper and show that there was an intense chlorine segregation on the surface but at the same time there was 
there was segregation of the grain boundary. Uh, the segregation grain boundary causes a destruction of a electrical bar potential barrier. It is uh, well known in the manufacture of zinc oxide varistors, and this destruction of potential bar barrier at the grain boundary causes uh, an increase in the conductivity. The increase of uh, con total conductivity, then the conductivity of grain boundaries and bulk, increase the free pathway for uh, electrons and rows, and then the time of recombination uh, increase and then you have a more time for photocatalytic reactions. In this impedance spectroscopy uh, diagram here, we can see the increase of chlorine and the zinc oxide decrease the total resistivity. Then you can see here the total resistivity decrease with uh, chlorine and Consequently, we have an increase of conductivity. And this semicircle here is referred to the grain boundary resistance. And then you have a decrease, a strong decrease in the grain boundary resistivity. And this has, as a consequence, an increase of the total conductivity. This is very important for have more time of uh, uh, electrons and hole without, with, without any recombination and then increase the uh, photocatalysis. We have chosen the photodecomposition reaction of acetaminophen to understand the effect of chlorine segregation uh, on ZNO. Uh, after uh, 108 minutes of UV radiation, we have here the specific conversion and for two conditions. The first condition is the as prepared powder and the second condition is for powders lixiviated with water. We know that chlorine ions uh, pass on photocatalysts like uh, ZNO. Uh, therefore, when they are present on the surface, the reaction is reduced. However, after, after lixiviation, the reactivity increases very much and, and mainly at the high, highest concentrations. And you see for uh, pure zinc oxide, we don't have any difference uh, uh, before and after lixiviation, but for uh, high concentration of chlorides, we have a big difference. It's, it's very interesting because in this case, uh, most of chloride uh, after lixiviation is on, in the grain boundaries. Then we have a, a very big conductivity and the photocatalyst, uh, photocatalysis of acetaminophen uh, is very important when you compare with pure ZNU. And then this shows us that uh, for chloride, it is important to have chloride in the grain boundary to increase the conductivity, but it's not so good to have the chloride in the surface because the the, the possible the reaction of photocatalysis. And uh, for fluorides, the the effect is very very important. You can see here uh, powder with uh, a very low concentration of fluoride. Uh, we have a very, very important increase in the photocatalytic uh, activity after uh, lixiviation. And then the fluoride and chloride on the surface is not very, very so good, but is necessary in grain boundaries. We have more some results. And this time is titanium oxide uh, containing some uh, oxides like uh, manganese, iron, chromium and copper oxide then this metal oxide of titanium oxide for all 1% mole prepared by Pechini method at 350 degrees, 15 hours in air. And then we see the same phase, it's just anatase, okay? And uh, the crystallite size decreases with uh, doping, 
for all samples. The specific surface area increase with uh, doping. Then this, then we can think about uh, segregation and the surface excess. Prove this. Then we have a surface segregation for chromium, copper, iron, and manganese in different proportion. And the acetamine of and the composition, you can see here the square, red square, is the titanium oxide, the pure titanium oxide. And with iron, we have the same uh, uh, kinetic of the composition. For copper and uh, manganese, the kinetic is lower than the titanium oxide, but for chromium oxide, you have really an increase of uh, uh, decomposition of acetaminophen, acetaminophen decomposition. Then this is very interesting. Then we think that this uh, transition metal have have the the property of change the valency in the surface and transfer charge for the acetaminophen and uh, have the oxidation of acetaminophen. But, but the more interesting is that when you lixiviate the powders, we have the same comportment of titanium oxide. Then after lixiviation, we can see all uh, system independently of uh, the composition. We have the same uh, uh, the same compartment. Then you can see here with uh, segregation here for lixiviate. And then all uh, that is activity are related to the segregation. This is a, uh, really a, a result that give us the, this uh, possibility to uh, understand the segregation as a very important uh, factor for uh, photocatalysis. In summary, the segregation at interface controls the particle growth for nanoparticles and at the same time increase the at the same time increases the photocatalysis efficiency by increase the conductivity of grain boundary, increase the recombination time and form uh, segregation of me uh, transition metals facilitating the transfer of char surface charge for the, the reaction. I want to thank the organizing committee to invite me to talk to you and for our sponsors, uh, RCGI, FAPESP, NP, Inchar Brazil. Thank you.